Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to take a look at how we can display information on the screen by using the text view so let's get straight into it. In order to display information on the screen in SwiftUI we have to use a view available to us called text. Now when you create a SwiftUI project by default you'll notice that you actually have a text view already added and you can see the words being rendered on the screen but just so we can see the different examples let's actually add a vstack and then we can like add in multiple text views to see how we can actually you know use different variations of them so in order to do this i'm just going to hold down command on my keyboard and then click on text and then choose the option to embed in vstack like so All right cool so it's worth noting that we can actually customize our text views by changing the text within it i.e if we wanted to we could use the modifiers to change and control the style of it so let's see how we can actually make our text view on the screen here bold italicized and also underscored as well Cool. So as you can see here, you're able to actually apply modifiers directly onto text views and style them. So if I just zoom in a bit more here, you can see here that my text is now bold, it's italic, and it's underlined. And what I've done is I've just given the underline a specific color of red. Now, if you don't want to have a color, you could literally just completely uh, remove this. And you just get a default black underline, like so. But in our example, let's just set it to true and we'll also set a color to it as well. If we wanted to, we can easily apply both the system fonts onto our text views as well. So let's see how we can do this with two more examples. So as you can see here, in our second example, we have our text and I've applied a color onto it. And in order to apply a color onto a text view, you need to use the foreground color. And I've specified I want it to be mint, which is why it's this green color. And what I've done here is I've said that I want to set a font using the system's large title. And I'm also applying a weight of black onto it as well, which is why it looks um, really bold. But alternatively, if you wanted to, you don't actually have to use the dot large title. If you wanted to, you could actually use the system specifically and say, I want it to be this size. I want it to be this way. And I want it to also be this design, as you can see in the third example. And you can also do a similar thing if you had your own custom fonts. So if I had my own custom font, I could actually apply that by simply using the dot custom, notate, dot notation and specifying the custom font name as well. So I quickly just wanna to go to the Apple documentation. So on Xcode, if you just go to help and then develop a documentation. And in here, if we just go to Swift UI and then use the controls, you should see text. And then within text, if you just scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that you have a whole bunch of different modi ways to style your views that you can use. So here's some of the modifiers that we've used and you can see there's a lot more. There's also modifiers in terms of, you know, customizing a way that your text views work with the available space as well as handling multiple lines of text as well if you wanted to. But it's also worth noting that with text, we can also do formatting as well with it. So let's go back to our Xcode example and let's look at a simple example of how we can actually create a timer just by using our text view so all I've done here is I've said that I want the text to start from this date. So this is dot now, so the current time now, and I've set the style of it to be timer. So if I now run this, you'll notice that we get an automatic timer within our applications for free. Now it's worth noting that because this is just using a text view and the style is set to timer, we're not able to actually observe this value here. So if you're someone who actually wants to observe what the current time is for your timer, then you probably want to use something like Combine, which will allow you to easily do this. And also do this, I actually have a video called Getting Started with Combine that you should check out. But we're not just limited to timers. If we wanted to, we could also ask the text to render out a date on the screen as well. So let's look at this now. So you can see again, we're using the same type of initialization with text where we specify that we want to pass in the date and we're saying that we want the style of it to be the time. So as you can see on this example here, we've now got the current time here and also as well on our second example, we're saying that we want the style this time to be date and we've now got the current date here. So there's quite a few different styles you can use with dates when you're working with text. And in order to see a list of all of them, you can either A, hit the dot and you'll see a list of all of them or alternatively, if you just click into it by holding command and then clicking into it, you should see a list of all the different date styles available to you with examples as well. So you can easily see what it is that you're going to get. So text can be really useful when you want to work with dates and also, you know, just display them on the screen. And also as well, when because you're not actually hard coding any kind of like time zone or locale, depending on the user's device in terms of where they are, it will automatically format the that 
it will automatically format the date to match their current system device. So this is really useful if you need to format dates nice and easily. We can get even greater control when working with dates by using the new Swift format APIs directly as well. So let's actually see how we can use the format parameter with text this time to actually style our date. So we'll do this now. Okay, cool. So as you can see here, we're now saying that we want to use the date dot now and we want to format it using this date for format style. So for the date, we want it to be abbreviated and the time we want it to be shortened. But as you can see here, when working with dates, you can easily use the new Swift format API to easily format your values within your text views as well. Now it's also worth noting that this isn't just limited to dates, it can be any um, value that conforms to the format style. And we'll look at another example of how we can use this with currency. This time, rather than me passing the date object, I've actually passed in a decimal here, and we're actually using the format currency. So in the currency, you have to give it a currency code so it can know what it should format it with. And you can see in our examples, by us passing in pounds and dollars, we get the symbols for us before the value for free. And this could be really useful when you're working with multiple currencies because you just need to just specify and pass in the currency code and let the text view handle the formatting itself. What we could also do as well within text is we can actually also give it a date range as well. So we can actually specify a to and from date range. So let's see how we can do this now. So as you can see here, you can see our start date is now and our end date for our range is an hour from now as well. So you can see here, you get the formatting where it adds in the dash for you. So if you're someone who needs to add in some kind of date range within your application, then this can be really useful and you barely do this in any lines of code. So one final thing I want to discuss before we wrap up on this video as well, I want to talk about how you can use SF symbols within a text view as well. So you may be wondering what is the point of this because you have something like labels, but what about if I wanted to put my SF symbol directly between these two, to these two words because with labels, the SF symbol only starts at the beginning here. So let's actually just type this out and then we'll break it down. Okay, cool. So what I've done is I've just split up our text into two different groups. And the reason why that is, is because when you're working with VStacks, you're actually only limited to adding up to 10 elements within it. So if you add anything more than 10, then it throws an error. But by us separating it into groups, we're able to get around this. So you'll see here with our last example, we actually have our SF symbol calendar directly within the text and this is really useful and um, because we may have a situation where we want to do this and we don't want our sf symbol to be at the start we may want to control where it is we're able to just directly pass in an image within our text and the reason why this works with images specifically like sf symbols is because an sf symbol in itself is also a font so it's a scalable font that you can add um, text to so that's why you're able to add it within strings when it renders out the text all right cool so that's everything in today's video if you enjoyed this video i'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below also as well if you haven't already i really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to get updates whenever i release a new video that's everything from me i'll catch you all in a bit deuces